Till now, we have seen what are psychometric tests and how many different kind of tests there are. We have also seen that there are different ways to classify psychometric tests. In this module, we will see how to know if a test is a good test. All psychometric tests are instruments of measurement, and regardless of how they are classified or grouped, they must display measurement characteristics. These measurement characteristics for psychometric tests are called psychometric properties. Let's look at the learning objectives of this module. This module aims at demonstrating what psychometric properties really are and why we should care about them as test users. We will learn about three major psychometric properties, which are applicable across all kinds of psychometric tests. As said earlier, psychometric tests are instruments of measurement, and psychometric properties are those characteristics of tests which allow us to see how good a test is. Psychometric properties provide an answer to some fundamental questions about measurement capacity of the test in question. They tell us how consistent is the test in measuring what it is measuring. They also tell us if the test is really measuring what it is supposed to be measuring. And finally, they tell us what number can be called as low, medium or high score on a given test. There are some other psychometric properties, but they are beyond the scope of this crash course. Before looking into the psychometric properties, let's think a moment. Why do we need to know different properties? Why can't it be as simple as measuring temperature using a thermometer? Primary reason behind the need to look at multiple psychometric properties is that the constructs measured by psychometric tests are intangible and complex. They are not simple, easy, verifiable things like height, weight, temperature, and pressure. How can you see non-verbal reasoning ability or detailed consciousness? These concepts are far more complex than temperature. We need to look at multiple indicators to ascertain the quality of a tool measuring complex psychological characteristics. Secondly, psychometric tests have social and psychological impact. They are used as a source of information for taking important decisions about people. What we can say on the basis of psychometric tests is subject to scrutiny by professional bodies and legal authorities, and therefore, being sure about the quality of a test becomes even more important when it comes to psychometric tests. Psychometric properties give the required confidence in proper use of the test. So let's look at three main psychometric properties. Three main psychometric properties answer three fundamental questions about measurement, and two of them are applicable even on physical measurements. Let's take them one by one. First property tells us how consistent the test is in measuring across multiple times. This property concerns with repeatability of the result. If the same test is administered on the same candidate again and again. This property is called reliability. There are different kinds of reliabilities, but all of them share the common meaning of consistency of measurement. Second psychometric property tells us if the test is really measuring what it claims to measure. It is called validity. In everyday physical measurements of weight, length, and temperature, this property is not even looked at as the physical measurements are tangible and verifiable. But in psychological or mental measurements, it becomes very important to examine if the test is measuring what it is supposed to measure, as the attributes measured by tests are intangible and rather complex. A question related to mathematics might be related to numerical ability, as well as the verbal ability if that question is asked in a way like what is one-fifth of a quarter of 20? As the test taker first needs to decode the mathematical expression hidden in words to solve the question. In behavioral science, there are multiple ways of looking at and examining validity, 
and we will see that in detail in the level 2 course. The third psychometric property of a test is about the reference point for comparison, to know if a score is low, medium or high. It is commonly referred as norms. All the measurements have a reference against which they are compared. For example, thermometer has a reference point at 0 degrees Celsius. This is the temperature when water freezes. And another reference point at 100 degrees Celsius, which is the temperature when water starts boiling. The scale between 0 and 100 is divided into 100 equal parts, each part representing 1 Celsius. Similarly, the measurement of length has a reference point for one meter, and this is There is an international organization which keeps a record of references for physical measurements. Psychometric tests are also a kind of measurement, and they have reference points. However, since these measurements are related to intangible people characteristics, there is no possibility for having a physical reference point. So, in this case, what is the reference point for psychometric tests? To understand this, we must understand one fundamental aspect of all mental characteristics that are measured by psychometric tests, and that is, they have no minimum or maximum limit neither an objective unit. For example, there is no minimum or maximum limit of intelligence, and there is no accepted unit of measurement for intelligence. In this situation, psychometric measurements have their reference point as the average or mean score of the population on the characteristic they are measuring to. And from there, all comparisons are made. People who get higher scores than the mean score can be termed as having higher intelligence, and those who get lower score than the mean score are termed as having lower level of intelligence. There is another concept of psychological continuum in mental measurements, which say that any continuous psychological attribute can be conceptualized as distributed along a scale with an identifiable midpoint and unspecified lowest and highest limit. We will talk about this concept of psychological continuum later, but to get the basic concept, it is sufficient to say that it is a scale with a midpoint, but no lower or highest point, and the midpoint of the scale is the reference point for measurement. Please go through the learning materials in this module to understand better the concepts of reliability, validity, and norms or reference points, and ask in the forum and take part in the activities to better understand it. Good luck!